In this video, we will go through the four main addressing methods used to locate data in memory. In previous videos, we have looked at opcodes and operands. We will now take a look at how the operand can be used in different ways to point at memory addresses. Immediate addressing is the simplest type of addressing. In this case, the operand itself holds the value to be used by the opcode. For example, load hash 32 means load the value 32 into the accumulator. This is the equivalent of straight up giving your friend an envelope with 32 pounds in it, no hassle. This is very similar to using constants in a high level programming language and saves memory space as the value doesn't have to be stored separately. As a result, however, the size of the data is greatly limited as it has to fit into the small space reserved for addressing. Direct addressing is the most common form of addressing. In this case, the operand points to the memory address holding the data to be used by the opcode. For example, load32 means load the value at memory address 32 into the accumulator. This is the equivalent of giving your friend an envelope which says they can find some money in vault number 32. This is very similar to using variables in a high-level programming language and allows the value to be changed during the program's execution. It also allows the data to have much larger size. Indirect addressing takes direct addressing a step further. Instead of pointing to the address of the value directly, it points to an address which stores the address of the value. For example, load at 32 means load the value at the memory location defined at address 32. This is the equivalent of giving your friend an envelope that says they can find a treasure map in vault number 32. This allows the same operand to point at different memory addresses. Notice how changing the value at address 32 changes which memory location the CPU accesses during load. Essentially, the same operand can point to at address 40, 50, or any other address, changing as needed during the program's execution. Index addressing points to a specific character in a string or a specific item in an array. For example, load 32 0 means load the first character of the value stored at address 32 and load 32 3 will load the fourth character. This is the equivalent of laying out a number of envelopes with money in them and telling your friend they can have the first or fourth envelope. To understand how indexing works and why indices always start at 0 instead of 1, we need to know how data is actually stored in memory. A string of characters, for example, is not stored under a single memory address, like it is in BitMachine. A single memory address can only hold 8 bits of data, which equates to one character, meaning that the word Apple is not stored at address 32, but is instead stringed together through addresses 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. The index number can then be used to offset the original memory address by adding the index number and memory address number together. And now you can see why indexing uses zero to access the first item, because the original address plus zero gives us the first position. This of course raises the question, how can an entire string be loaded into the CPU? Well, the answer, it can't be. To load in an entire string, a loop must be used to load characters in one after the other starting from address 32. But then how does the CPU know when to stop loading in values? Data in memory is slotted into addresses one after the other without any clear division. So without additional information, the CPU will continue loading in every subsequent memory address. There are two main methods to indicate the end of a string or array. First, the length of the string can be stored separately often at the start of the string. The CPU can then look at it and know the length of the string. Second, a null terminator can be added to the end of the string, indicating its end. A null terminator is a memory address with zero value. This doesn't mean holding the value zero, as that has its own 8-bit representation, but having a fully zeroed out memory address. When the CPU hits the null terminator, it knows the string has ended. BitMachine uses a virtual null terminator signified by a slash zero, meaning that in case of the word Apple, index five will return slash zero. To learn more about addressing methods or try them for yourself, visit bitmachine.co.uk 
and experiment with the presets or create your own programs.